clinical diagnosis of coarctation of aorta in a small infant may be quite challenging. Sometimes they may present with heart failure and the cause may not be evident. In a severe case, they could even present with shock and acidosis also. And the reason why it's difficult, most often you might miss to examine the femoral pulses, which is a must. And in an unsedated infant, especially if it's a chubby child, it is often difficult to assess the femoral pulse. So whenever you have a clinical suspicion, or even otherwise in all cases, it is better to examine a sleeping child, the femoral pulse as well. Then it can also be missed even by echocardiography sometimes. That is what we are going to see now. Now we will see how a diagnosis of coarctation of aorta can be missed when there is an associated large patent ductus arteriosus. This is a diagrammatic representation of the narrowing of the descending aorta just beyond the left subclavian. It's a shelf-like structure producing narrowing of descending aorta. This will be evident on suprasternal view in echocardiography. That's also another reason why we should not forget to do a suprasternal view in infants being evaluated for congenital heart disease. And also in those who are evaluated for heart failure. If you miss this, you will treat it as uh, some form of neonatal heart failure like dilated cardiomyopathy or myocarditis and then a very eminently treatable cause is missed. So that's why suprasternal view is important in infants with heart failure as well. So this narrowing produces a high gradient which can be picked up by Doppler echocardiography. The narrowing itself can also be seen by two-dimensional echocardiography. But what happens when there is a patent ductus arteriosus? Usually, the ampulla, the widest portion of the PDA, is just across the coarctation shelf. So you can see that the blood flow is rather unrestricted when there is a large PDA. Moreover, PDA produces a hyperdynamic circulation and the pulse volume will be higher. Even if you carefully examine the lower limb pulses, in such a situation, you can miss coarctation of aorta as there is a fairly good lumen for the aorta in the presence of a large ampulla of the PDA just across the cork segment. Things change when either the ductus closes spontaneously or when it is closed by intervention or surgery. If the narrowing becomes very critical, the infant can go in for shock, heart failure, acidosis, etc. after closure of the ductus. This is also the reason why symptoms of coarctation may manifest after spontaneous closure of PDA as well. So it is highly important to meticulously see this region on echocardiography. Sometimes transthoracic echocardiography may not be enough and you may need transesophageal echocardiography with higher resolution to pick up these abnormalities. That is, PDA can be easily diagnosed. The continuous murmur will be the uh, higher volume of pulse and on echo the jet will be easily visible because this region is at a high pressure and pulmonary artery pressures are low, definitely you will see the PDA jet. Coarctation is what can be missed when there is an associated PDA. Meticulous care is needed during echocardiography as well and sometimes transesophageal echocardiography has also to be resorted to if there is a doubt and transthoracic echocardiography does not give good images of this region.